Let me welcome everybody. Welcome to this week's Future Trends Forum. My name is Brian Alexander. I'm the forum's host. I'm its creator. I'm your chief cat herder for the next hour. And we're really delighted to see you all here. We have a fantastic guest on a great topic. And I'm really looking forward to our conversation. I'm absolutely delighted uh, on a professional and a personal level to welcome a colleague and friend. Dewan Stanford is one of the most extraordinary thinkers and practitioners of design thinking in higher education in the world. He is the founding president of Fluid Hive, which is a great consultancy. He's my colleague at Georgetown University, where he teaches a design studio class, among other things. He's also a leader at Ohio State University and at Elon University, where he helps them rethink higher education for the 21st century. So without any further ado, let me just welcome Dewan Stanford. Here I am. <laughs> excellent, excellent. Welcome, welcome, and thank you for coming. Yeah, thank you for thank you for having me. Um, one uh, one update is um, I was the um, founder of the Center for um, uh, Design Thinking at Elon, uh, and then I rolled uh, out of that role, and um, post pandemic um, became the interim director of design innovation at um, Ohio State, reporting to the provost in the provost office. Very good. You have a lot of hats, and I have to make sure I, have, I keep track of them. Me too. <laughs> Dewan, uh, we like to have people introduce themselves in the forum with a particular way. Uh, we ask people not to speak of their past, but of where they're going in the next year. So what are the big topics and ideas that are top of mind for you? And also, what, what projects, what, what form of your work will, be, will, will your work be taking? Uh, so the... Uh... The big things on on my mind, and it's and it's largely been due to the unique position uh, that I've been occupying at at Ohio State, uh, is is looking at the potential for human centered design, um, really at the the highest level of the academic enterprise. Um, so I I report to um, report to the provost um, at Ohio State. And um, in doing so, I, I work with senior vice provosts and um, emerging projects and in injecting here and there uh, bits of design thinking, bits of innovation. I get to ask questions um, that either people don't want to ask, ask <laughs> or um, are just I get to be the weird one and um, also think about um, what the what's happening three years out, five years out um, and. And in some ways, my, my role is explicitly to help people do today well uh, while while thinking and playing in tomorrow enough to invest energy there. Um, and so I'm I, I, I gracefully borrow from um, lots of people like yourself who are accomplished futurists um, to help people nudge people into the future. Um, but I'm also uh, looking at um, at a very high level, the, the range of questions um, that, that serve us well when we're thinking about design and design thinking. And my, my approach is, is I'm deeply interested in questions. Um, okay. and, and I have questions that uh, people get tired of me asking. Um, and I, I know that when I like start to see the eye roll, I'm like, oh good, I'm, I'm doing my job well because people are finally getting tired of hearing me bring up this question again. Um, but one of those questions is, what problem are we trying to solve? Yes. Um, and it's it's funny how we will get into doing things um, and we'll start to talk about systems and programs and how we can stand things up. And But we lose track of that. Like, wait a minute, what problem are we really trying to solve here? And and how do we focus our attentions and energies uh, that way? And so I'm I'm often in the role of, of helping people come back to that question. And surprisingly, a lot of groups haven't really refined that question. So when I when I think about um, my work in the coming six months, I'm looking at uh, systems and uh, system aware design uh, so that people are designing with systems uh, in mind. Uh, connected to that is uh, thinking in, in cycles. Um, and so instead of um, the, okay, what is the, the next moment and the next moment I'm pulling into, okay, what are the, what's the set? What's a complete set of, of moments in this endeavor? 
um, whether it's in relation to leadership or in a program or a series of conversations with academic leaders, what is the set and then how can we design the set so that we're connecting it to, to strategy, to our values, to what we need to do to serve students well. Um, I'm also thinking about um, on, the, on the tactical side, um, because there is the interim in my title, um, how, how am I um, building toolkits and systems that will outlive my time uh, at, uh, at the university? And part of that is recruiting uh, the director of uh, design innovation. Uh, so we're, we have an open search for, for that currently. Um, and that, uh, that posting is, is out there. And, and I, and I, I wrote in somewhere in, in one of the things that I sent out to, to some colleagues, like, I really feel like this is the most exciting job in higher ed. Um, because I get to work at the sort of highest level of the academic institution. Um, and really run my experiments at scale. Um, and and have the the latitude to um, to propose experiments to do things, and the as long as I'm connecting it to our strategies, our values, I have uh, I have been given a lot of yeses. <laughs> that's excellent. That's excellent, and that's a, a huge amount of work too. Um, one of one of the many things I admire about you, Dewan, is your ability to engage and work with and network with so many people. Um, to really mobilize a lot of folks on the right folks on a problem. Thank you. Uh, friends, I, I'm going to ask Juan a couple of, of, of questions to drive him crazy, but the, the forum here is for all of you. Uh, the forum is for your questions and your comments. So as we start the ball rolling, please think about what you'd like to put to Duan. Uh, what, uh, and remember, you all come from different backgrounds. Uh, some of you have different professional backgrounds, geographical locations, institutional types. So all of your questions are welcome. And if you'd like to learn more, by the way, about the one on the bottom left of the screen, you should see uh, one or two kind of mustard colored buttons. One of them is for Fluid Hive, which is his consultancy. And the other is Design Thinking 101, a really nice introduction to design thinking that I strongly recommend. So I guess to one the uh, design thinking has been out for for a while now. Um, in higher education, in the world. Um, right now, in 2022, what do you think are the major benefits, um, the major positive uses of design thinking within the academy? It's helping people ask questions that pull them out of the whirlwind. Um, you know, there, there's the, the intensity of the day-to-day, of the, day -to -day, of the um, sudden <laughs> emerging challenges, opportunities, all of that. Um, and then being able to uh, pull back into that question about um, what problem are we trying to solve? And then um, staying flexible as you do that. Um, one of the one of the things I, I, I help people do is to say, okay, here's the problem that we're trying to solve as we understand it today. <laughs> uh -huh. Uh -huh. Um, and then we go into that basically, okay, playing with how we think we know what we know. Um, so approaching it with a uh, slightly deeper humility uh, than, um, than, than can happen from time to time. Um, and, and, I, and I have to you know, use that humility constantly in my work uh, because I'm working with experts in different areas of the Office of Academic Affairs or with higher education leaders um, when I do not understand um, the, the entirety of their expertise and what they do. Um, my job is to um, help direct that expertise via conversation toward um, the right kinds of problems, right kinds of questions, and then maintain the space on um, iterating on that and on, on developing those. Um, and so it's the finding that that problem creates an anchor and we can play in that space. But if we're doing our work well, it will change as we move, uh, move through things. Um, one, one shift. I mean, some, some people will are, are kind of anchored on the, um, what I would call the Stanford model for design thinking, uh, mm -hmm. where it's all about empathy. It's like, Oh, so empathy. And you like, you know, the rest and you go, you go through that pattern. And, um, it, it served a, it served a purpose. It, it got a lot of people thinking about, 
other people who weren't, <laughs> um, uh, especially in, in the tech sector where it was more like focused on like features and we'll, we'll go sell the user on this and this and like, no, 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 let's, let's actually like think about how people are going to uh, experience um, having 45 updates rolled out. Uh, the Windows experience, yes. <laughs> I wasn't going to name names. I was, I was just <laughs> uh, talking about that. So um, I'm deeply interested in the framing piece and and reframing um, because that skill around around remaining um, remaining adaptive um, and and I and I have I've called it taking a provisional stance toward the world, such that this is the world as I understand it, until I have better information. Uh, some people call that critical thinking, um, but uh, I noticed that a lot of times people would anchor on a problem, then sort of do all of this empathy research, and I have issues with that that are different, um, and then go into sort of prototyping and making without revisiting. Do we really understand that that problem? Mm -hmm. um, and so making a focus on on framing and reframing, and the empathy part becomes part of being a good researcher um, and uh, tapping into those qualitative quantitative skills um, and then moving through uh, the design process. And for me, from, from framing, it goes to exploring like, all right, how do we know what we know? What is happening in the, in the context of this problem? And we're thinking about not only the people we serve, but the people who will make, the people who will maintain, the people who will deliver, those things should all be involved. Those voices should all be involved from the beginning. And we don't do that often uh, in higher ed uh, yeah. because of the way silos function. And um, from there moving into, now we can start to see what sort of holds together where the ideas are. Um, and one of the reasons people don't like brainstorming is we jump to that too often without doing those uh, preliminary pieces. Um, and uh, I, I heard someone talking about, it's like, well, you, you do that early work to earn the right to create, uh -huh. Uh -huh. To, to earn that um, moment of collaboration. Uh, and then from there, it's it's the kind of the fun parts that people talk about. We're like, oh, okay. Then we see how these ideas hold together and then we'll come up with some some prototypes. And, and one of the challenges of what you might call design thinking uh, 1.0 uh, is often it would sort of stop at the prototype <laughs> and there was this dramatic handoff of, all right, over to you, other people to go and do maybe possibly. Um, and so I look at, you know, how do you do that last phase? And I think of that as cultivation, you know, where you're choosing a prototype and designing its pathway into kind of a stable orbit uh, in, in the world. Um, but to do that well, you have to have had at least some of the conversations with the people who will be doing that at the beginning. Uh, so that's why I talked about like who is who is there, both the people who will serve, people who will develop and maintain. And those people don't have to be like in there on the team, going to every meeting, doing everything, but have to be part of the conversation um, so that you're bringing those um, so that the guides for what a good solution, how a good solution might look uh, in early. Um, and you don't need to know sort of, oh, we don't need the, the pieces of those solutions, but getting those guides down before you start generating ideas is really what helps you do the work well. Um, and um, so, yeah, but I'm, I'm, I want to hear, um, so how, how other people are thinking about uh, design and, and innovation. I have, I have particular thoughts due to um, just particular, um, you know, the path, path that I've, I've taken um, and, uh, and the challenges that I face. Um, A bunch of thoughts and questions have come in and I just want to relay these to you. The, uh, 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 Lisa Durf pointed out that design thinking sounds like good thinking. Um, and uh, John Hollenbeck uh, compares it to, um, uh, to learning, uh, how framing the question is important. But then John had a, a, a quick question, a distinction question, um, which was um, how to, whoops, excuse me. What's the difference between design thinking and problem-based thinking? And is the role of the learner the same? Um, John, I'd have, to, I'd have to hear a little bit more about sort of how you're, how you're defining problem-based thinking. And um, one thing I will say about 
design thinking is that good designers steal. <laughs> um, and so it's pulling, I pull from everywhere, um, yeah. all, all kinds of tools. And, and sometimes I do it sloppily. Um, so I, I take things from the, the futurist toolkit, um, the interviewing and, and, and listening methods I use are pulled from, are pulled from ethnography, a bit from social work, a bit from here, a bit yeah. from there. Yeah. Um, and so I, I get less hung up on the, uh, on the definition, um, and, and more focused on what tools do I need to bring to bear in a particular context? Um, Hey, John. Good. Help me, John. Um, yeah, so problem-based learning There's comes... a moment of connecting. Oh, are we still connecting? No, uh, you should be able to see each other. I, yep. So I, I pay good money for this internet connection. Um, problem-based learning, to me, goes back to like Bruner, even Dewey, talking about instead of setting up learning environments as places of prescribed answers that you regurgitate, that you have real working problems. And so when I hear design thinking, I want to put it into that camp, I guess, is what I was getting at in the question. But <laughs> that yet there seems to be a need, need for something called design thinking, a need for something called uh, problem-based learning. So I was just wondering if, what your thoughts are on where that difference is. Um, I mean, if I had to I had to think about the the difference based on what I understand, I would. Um, I mean, I I would situate problem based learning as like in in a pedagogical concept uh, context as a um, approach to approach to learning and design think is as could be one piece that contributes to that uh, environment, but design thinking in itself as um, you know, as its own pedagogy and approach, an approach to learning, I, I think there's a just a lot that's missing, um, and you can, I mean, you can use it that way, but I think there would just be a, a lot of um, a lot of filling in because uh, I would I would I would I would approach it. My my question would be like, oh well, like how might we design a learning environment that accomplishes X? Mm -hmm. uh, whereas. Um, there's a, a much deeper and richer history um, uh, around problem-based learning and, and how you would structure that particularly um, so that the learners are encountering the the context and mm -hmm. uh, receiving the receiving the coaching receiving the feedback um, and so and, and design thinking really isn't isn't set up for that um, because it's um, the way I practice, I'm often surrounded by subject matter experts mm -hmm. and I'm bringing sort of my area of expertise, you know, into, uh, into contact uh, with theirs and seeing what that mashup is like, um, as opposed to um, when I'm looking in a training context or a teaching context mm -hmm. and uh, helping people make the tools their own. Is that, was that a, a helpful? It's getting there. There's really an interesting chat going on that I, I can't keep up with and listen to you as fully as I want. But yeah, it, it does. I think it sounds to me, and this may sound a little catty, but it sounds like design thinking plays better with the structure of the institution, whereas problem-based learning probably wants a different institution than traditional school. That's interesting. Um, yeah. I would say it depends on who the practitioner is. Yeah, yeah. You know, if you're, um, I mean, the, I think the, the tool doesn't really care about the structure of the institution. Um, the, the person or people uh, employing it, you know, if, if the, the intent is to question the structures and um, how we are defining learner and the learner environment, um, there are tools in the design thinking toolkit um, that can help help you do that, um, yeah. but it's um, you know, and, and where the way I'm playing right now is I'm I'm floating across kind of different different regions um, in the university, so it's a, it's a um, 
it's 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 emerged as kind of like this connective tissue, <laughs> uh, where it's like, oh wait a minute, I, I talked to this person over here in technology, and then I talked to this person over here, dealing with students, and and I'm seeing this connection over here, and then I get to talk about my connections, and other people see that, uh, whereas often um, a lot of the senior roles happen uh, independently. Mm -hmm. Okay, oh. that sounds good. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, John. You're thank you. enough of me here. Goodbye. That's okay. <laughs> Friends, if, if you're new to the forum, that's an example of two things. That began as an example of a text-based question, you know, where you type that in, and then as a video question where we brought them up. So if you're new to the forum, or if you're not new to the forum, please use whichever or both as you feel comfortable. And as I say that, there are already questions lined up. And Dewan, thank you for that really uh, direct and, and, uh, and thoughtful answer. Uh, we have a, a, another kind of conceptual question that comes from uh, Tom Hames, who asks, would you distinguish your approach to design thinking with the concept of emergent design from Pendleton, Julian Brown? Do you think education needs open-ended design or is that asking too much? Um, I can put that on the screen again, because that, that's, a, that's a chewy question. And actually, Tom, maybe you can uh, jump in and just talk a little bit about um, how you're thinking about emergent design, because um, that might that might help give everyone some context. I'll do that. And in fact, I'll actually give you guys the uh, the splashy format. How's that? Oh, splashy. Oh, no, format. I've been splashed. Yes. Uh, hey, Duan. Um, so, no, I mean, the um, if you look at the um, Design Unbound books by Ann Pendleton Julian and John Seeley Brown, um, they come up with a thing called emergent design. And to me, I see the distinction between uh, traditional design thinking at the Stanford School that you you, you referenced a few minutes ago. Uh, traditional. It's kind of funny to talk about traditional design thinking, but um, between uh, the more common uh, practicing practice of design thinking and emergent design is that design thinking as practiced, you know, the Stanford model is is a closed loop in a sense. It is it, it is iterative, but it's still operating in that in that and, and the idea that there's an actual endpoint to it at some point. Mm -hmm. Whereas emergent design is kind of what John questions the uh, what John questioned about, you know, the point he made about, you know, is the problem that we need to fix something in school or that we need to fix school. Um, and, um, you know, moving institutions in that direction. And I know that's a, that's a tough, that's a really tough order. Um, because, you know, you're asking people to question the legitimacy of their institutions at a very deep level at that point, and then re, you know, have the courage to look at that honestly and solidly and then move forward from there. That doesn't mean we get rid of the institutions, but there's a lot of fundamental stuff about our institutions of both K-12 and higher ed mm -hmm. that are anachronistic in the extreme um, legacies of the industrial age. So, um, but I was wondering in terms of, you know, I don't know how much you know about the um, Design Unbound books, which I highly recommend uh, to anybody who's interested in this, um, uh, is, uh, um, again, that the distinction between where do you draw the lines, right? How far are you willing to go in these discussions? Uh, are you fixing problems as a kind of kind of tongue in cheek said? Are you fixing problems you can see, or are you trying to? Uh, uh, I can't remember what I said exactly anymore. But are you fixing the problems you can see, or are you trying to find the problems you can't see? Yeah, and, and for for me, it's um, it's both. Um, you know, I have the you know, there's the um, so being responsive to the client <laughs> uh, in of course, terms yeah. of like, oh, like, well, here's you know, like, here's, here's why you, you've invited me here. But, um, and I always say, okay, we can explore that as opposed to we will do that um, because I want to understand why and digging with those questions. And I'm looking to like, okay, well, what is this ladder up to? Where does this take us 10 or 15 years? Um, and in, you know, in, in our context around, around higher ed, um, you know, how is learning changing? And mm -hmm. are, as we're doing this, are we um, being open to capturing some of those opportunities or running some of those experiments or, um, 
creating the, the flexibility. So one of the things I think about in, you know, at the, at the tail end of the design process is um, how do you make your solution speak? Um, mm -hmm. And people talk about metrics and measures and like, okay, but um, that often leaves out how will you make the solution speak to whether it's solving the problem that you intended to solve, because sometimes like, those are vanity measures. Um, and how do you um, set up that solution so it's giving you some signal as to whether that problem's even relevant anymore? Because um, mm -hmm. I think that that's one of the like the the mechanisms, or or, or um, I don't know whether it's a leadership technology or an innovation technology um, around um, how do we know when solutions to problems are no longer serving us. That's either the, either the solution no longer works or the problem no mm -hmm. longer works. Because in, in higher ed, you can go to any university and find a huge stack of stuff that mm -hmm. um, people don't know how to stop doing um, or things that people are doing that no longer um, are yeah. no longer accomplishing their the, the stated goals for students. Mm -hmm. And so I think when, when you talk about sort of how far am I pushing things, um, I'm, I'm pushing into that space of orchestrating graceful endings. Um, and that's, that's the okay. way that I've phrased it. And I'm, I'm, I'm saying that to like senior leaders, uh, mm -hmm. everywhere, um, everywhere, everywhere, everywhere I work is like, if we can find a way to do graceful endings, some of your resource problems go away um, because it's <laughs> we're, no, we're no longer fun, funneling budget into things that are, are no longer serving us. Um, so that's that's how I, I think about that in um, in in my practice. Um, so I, I if I just do the the stuff for today and um, respond directly to the client ask, I'm not doing my job as a designer in. Um, and saying, okay, well, what is like one of the ways I've been phrasing it um, at Ohio State, and and this is one of the things where I say like, all of all of all of my comments and ideas are my own freakish creations and um, are are in no way speaking. Same here, in the uh, <laughs> institutional voice. Um, but I ask, what can we do that is uniquely possible here? Mm -hmm. um, and I remind right. people to think about that uh, because the sort of rushing to duplicate the like things of aspirants and peers. Like, oh, well, this worked over here and that worked over there and they got great results. Like, things to learn from, but we still need to focus on what's uniquely possible here with our assets, histories, values, et cetera. Um, so those are, are things that, that play into um, play into my practice. Um, do, you, do you get into the idea of anti-fragility at all in your in, in the work that you're doing with them and how does that, you know, because one of the other things, well, I'm kind of mixing Nicholas Taleb and, and, um, and the uh, design unbound a little bit here, but design unbound talks about whitewater world, that things are happening so fast. Everything we understand is being buffeted by external winds of change. I see uh, Patricia just listed off a bunch of them in the chat. Um, and, uh, you know, how do we make our institutions resilient, not just resilient, but thriving under those kind of circumstances? That's, um, uh, and, and that's, that's the anti-fragile part. So I'm kind of, that's the Taleb part, the, uh, the, the design unbound part. But do you talk about that in terms of, you know, what do you do for the next COVID? I mean, or the, the COVID-like event that you don't expect, right? The black swan? I, I, I talk about that, but I'm uh, I'm careful because people aren't expecting that from me. Okay. Um, and and so I I bring it up uh, very deferentially. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, and it's it's one of those things. I'm 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 very clear with um, the the people I I, I work with. Um, I'm entering into a context where I don't know what I don't know, and I'm mm -hmm. relying on everyone to. To help me like oh like, yeah no not so much oh we don't call that this here like yes yes we've done that we have this <laughs> um and so and, and doing the work in that regard um people have been extremely gracious uh, you know it's it, that that approach has served me well so when i think about um the the, the shocks 
to the systems we're designing. Um, one point is I, I think about, oh, well, how, what is our principle for quickly framing up challenges that we face? Um, how do we practice that when the stakes are low so that when the stakes are high, uh, we're okay. Mm -hmm. So um, secretly in the background by nudging people like, okay, well, what problem are we trying to solve here? Uh, sometimes I will reframe things as a, how might we question? <laughs> It's like, it's like, I think what right. we're really talking about here is how might we do this? Does, is that what, where everyone is or am I misunderstanding? Um, mm -hmm. And so there's there's a piece of that um, in, in developing some of the, 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 the system and team robustness. Um, mm -hmm. I think the, the other piece is um, around the instilling certain habits and rituals. <laughs> Mm -hmm. around how we how we grapple with like okay well, what is the challenge we're facing and where are we in the process of responding to it uh and those sure. are open questions for me um and and i'm experimenting with that now uh in terms mm -hmm. of like okay well how how might i um experiment with these rituals practices whatever you want to call them um but also what is the self-propagating mechanism um, you right. Know, or for example, there are 1800 people inside the office of academic affairs at, at Ohio state. Um, and so, you know, we're looking at, um, like what is the right amount of, uh, of change and, uh, and leadership who does that? Um, what, um, what propagates? Yeah. Adaptive, adaptive systems, John, um, you know, that's one of the one of the things I'm I'm thinking about, and also think about that within the sort of mix of the sort of like the cadence of the university. Um, and so, how can I use my role to create space for those uh, conversations, for those ecosystems to uh, to connect and adapt um, to and, and, and using the natural moments, um, mm -hmm. whether they're in sort of meetings and one-on-one -on -one interactions, communications, um, all of those small pieces to, to ladder up, um, to, and to an ecosystem that has, um, design, um, just woven into its, its DNA. Um, and that's, that's explicitly part of my job description. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, you know, to um, find ways to support uh, innovation culture um, at uh, at the university. Let me let me pause this right now because this is fantastic, and both of you are triggering a whole slew of chat questions back and forth. And <laughs> I want to make sure that you get a chance to to see those. Um, but we also have other questions that have come in. I want to make sure everyone gets a uh, a chance to ask them. Uh, Tom, as as usual, you you're tired of me saying this, but you always ask really good, deep questions. Thank you. Thank you. And, Thank and you. Luan, you just described such a beautiful way of, of acting in higher education that um, is so different in many ways from what we normally do. But I don't want to talk more. I want to give you more questions that have come in. Uh, and this is from uh, Jessica Bokarsi. Um, have you had success getting grant funding for design thinking projects? We've had very success with this, given that funders want an exact timeline deliverables, which aren't knowable beforehand. Yeah, I, I I like that. Um, the it's it's the it's like oh okay so um, and that's the they're approaching innovation as a recipe. Um, a lot of people will, will look at design thinking like oh it's this recipe you you put um, energy in it goes through these steps and boom innovation innovation comes out. Um, and so the the way I've um, looked at you know grant related uh, and i have and like i have not had to like go out and get grants <laughs> um i've had lots of uh conversations with development folks who are who are front facing um the the work that i did at elon was funded by a uh gift from a trustee uh so a, a, a trustee gave a large gift um for design driven work um Oops. And so when I when I think about like how to balance the, the the nature of the ambiguity and the desire for certainty on the part of funders, um, I often find me find myself scoping 
a um, uh, a, a timeline related to the problems to solve um, at at various points and being explicit about sort of what what we can do at various points and the kinds of outcomes without saying like oh we'll have this thing here because we don't know um, but we know it will be related to um, student loneliness and um, we will it will be a um, service or or product that serves to um, reduce or address uh, the student loneliness challenges on uh, on campus. Um, and for anyone who's actually interested in that topic, since I brought it up, um, I, um, Hope Lab has done some, uh, Hope Lab in uh, San Francisco has done some fantastic work uh, around um, uh, student loneliness on campus. Well, thank you for that uh, very practical uh, answer to one. And thank you, um, for the, Jessica, for that really, really solid question. Um, I. That's a great problem to uh, to bring up. Uh, friends, uh, you've seen some of our question formats, both the uh, video and the Q&A box. And of course, some of you have been shopping in a whole bunch of great stuff in the chat box. So please keep them coming uh, as we've been going. We've been covering a lot of ground and uh, hitting a, a wide range of interesting ways of approaching change and creativity in higher ed. So please uh, feel free to show uh, your own questions, your own thoughts and uh, I'll be glad to bring you up on stage or flash your questions on, on the screen. Uh, here's another one from Michael Meeks uh, at LSU who asks, your opinion on the importance of design thinking in the bigger picture for higher ed? And can traditional research schools faculty actually move into design thinking-ish teaching while shackled to their need to publish? Oh, <laughs> wade carefully into this one. Thanks, Michael, I didn't, I didn't see that bus coming. Uh, so I, like the first piece on uh, design thinking, the bigger picture of, uh, of higher ed. Um, you know, I, I think about the, um, the academic enterprise in terms of um, how are we designing the learning environment? So I, I think about the learning environment as a uh, design problem. Um, and, and that's just like the way my mind works, but I, it helps me have conversations uh, about it that way. Um, but that encompasses sort of the everything of the enterprise. Um, and um, so then you, you're pulling in system thinking, you're pulling in futures, um, you're pulling in change leadership and change management uh, and being very clear with people that they're not the same thing. Uh, sometimes people get those, those two overlapped. Uh, or uh, those two, uh, those two confused. Um, mm -hmm. The the idea that you can have innovation without without change, um, and then cause that change and not support people as they go through it. We've seen what happens, uh, and it's and it's not pretty. Um, and so it's thinking about both the leadership piece and and the management piece. Um, and so I'm, you know, there's there's this comfort zone for me around that side of things. Now the the challenges around um design thinking pedagogy and um and i think you were getting into tenure and promotion um like that that is a whole other uh <laughs> like whole other mess that plays out in uh in, in in different in different ways in different institutions um one of the one of the questions gets into you know to to what degree can can human-centered design have a voice in creating promotion and tenure systems um, and uh, making uh, changes in promotion and tenure systems. And the ability to do that um, is, I don't want to say it's leader dependent, senior leader dependent, but in, in a lot of ways it is um, because it, it takes the, the, the right leadership to um, not shut those conversations down um, to to help those conversations flourish, um, and so the the like any like the success that I've had um, would have been much harder with different leaders, um, and so I had I like just as as an example. So my um, when I was talking about doing the, the design work at Elon University, oh. um, the first time I went to Canvas, or the first time I went to campus, my first meeting was with the university president. I, I, that was my first meeting. My second oh. meeting was with the provost. 
my third meeting that day, busy day, um, was um, with the um, a senior vice provost that uh, I ended up reporting to do to while I was doing that work. Um, and so it takes that um, that kind of commitment. Now I've I've done projects um, where you know, like we didn't have the provost on board, and we didn't have the president on board, um, but you're working at a different scale and scope. And um, and and there it's I'm looking at like ways to keep the larger university system from eating anything cool we create. Yeah, yeah. That's always a risk. Uh, Jessica, um, uh, I believe it's Zeller asks a, a question that comes back to this topic uh, in from a different angle. Uh, she asks, I'm just reading this from the chat here. Um, it sounds like design thinking overlaps well with other frameworks. And now that Agile has come up, I wonder how we can gain support in such a traditional higher ed environment for future flexing of design thinking and Agile type innovative push. And you've, you've described some ways and some ways of approaching this already, Duan. I'm just wondering what what, um, what, you, what you could add to uh, Jessica's question. What would be, uh, what are some other ways we can convince people to follow what Ohio State has been doing, for example? Um, one of the um, questions that that I've been pursuing is how um, how do we as as leaders um, sort of live well within our roles and our role responsibilities, and also how do we do dynamic teaming uh, such that like oh I have like this outcome that, that I am responsible for like given my given my title. Um, but it's not going to happen because it is, um, in effect, a system challenge that stretches across broad areas of the university. Um, and so let, maybe it's coming into um, conflict with with budgetary rules, mm -hmm. and like then we have a governance. Oh, well, it's like hitting hitting something over here with uh, with faculty governments, and there's a risk component. Uh, maybe it's a summer program, and and you have. Uh, minors involved and you have sort of all these like risk and mitigation and compliance things to do. Um, and so part of it is how do we spin up um, those teams uh, without disrupting the role? And, um, you know, and it's, and it's not a, uh, I don't think it's a unique challenge to, to higher ed. Um, it, it's an, it's an organizational challenge and that's straying into uh, organizational development, um, and I will steal badly from those practitioners as well. Um, but looking at, at um, how we can, um, I can create the the frameworks uh, for those conversations so that we're not relying on them happening organically, because um, we rely on lots of things uh, to happen organically uh, in terms of how how teams function well together, and that's something that we can we can design. Um, we can, um, uh, we can, sorry, I saw something in the chat that made me giggle. Um, uh, we can, um, be very, we can be more intentional, uh, about, about how those teams come, uh, come together. And, um, that's one of the uh, challenges I have to figure out this summer. Um, mm -hmm. it's a lot to do. Um, well, uh, we have more questions coming in and uh i and some interesting comments um mm -hmm. jennifer goes on to describe uh oh excuse me uh, uh keenan Solanero mentions the uh, in the agile community the belief has been that 70 percent of agile led companies 70 percent are not consistent with the foundational principles um which is an interesting question um uh, and then um we have another one that has just come in uh and this is from uh this is from keenan or kenan Solanero. let me actually put this up on the screen Science is a major resource for new innovations. Your take about science departments at the university on innovative thinking, getting design thinking, having openness to input as well as output? I'm gonna have to throw up and I don't know. Um, the, the, way that, the, way that I've been, the way that I've been working, um, it's, it's often been finding ways to achieve various objectives like with uh, with whichever group so I haven't noticed a um, 
what I would call a, a deep resistance. Um, but that may be the way that I, the way that I approach things, uh, cause I'm just trying to use things from the design toolkit to give us a better evidence for various actions, better evidence for various ideas, uh, so that we're not rushing into, um, uh, attempting things in the learning environment, um, that just are like, oh, well, it, it seemed cool over here or it looked good over there. Uh, so I'm, I'm not sure if I'm, I'm, I'm answering, I'm answering your question. Um, but, um, that's, that's how I have, how I have played. And you're speaking of evidence and, and different departments have different standards for evidence or different mm -hmm. forms of evidence that they, that they focus on. That's a, Katie, that's a great question. Um, and that'd be a fun one to follow up on and explore. Well, it's, it's also the, um, like helping people combine their different ways of knowing, mm -hmm. um, and, mm -hmm. and sometimes see uh, a bit of validity in, um, ways of knowing or seeing other ways of knowing as complementing, uh, your ways of knowing. Ken adds, um, uh, I speak from having been on faculty at Georgetown in the chemistry department. So it looks like a kind of shadow colleague for us, um, which is great. Uh, friends, we have about seven minutes left, and so I wanted to put one question of my own uh, to Duan, um, and this gives you all a chance to formulate your own last question before we run out of time. Um, Duan, uh, I always think about the future, and here I'm thinking about what happens to design thinking in higher ed five or ten years from now. Um, that is, if we get more and more design thinking practice, uh, more design thinking habits that seep into, into higher ed, what does a college or university look like, say, five or 10 years from now, if it's been design thinking arised? Um, how, does, how does it look different from others? Um, so a, a couple things. I think that there would still be a, um, a role for, for someone like me in, in leadership. I don't think that that role goes away. Sure. Um, because having someone who is holding holding that space and protecting it um, will, will be an important. I think one of the one of the changes you know imagine you have um, leadership teams and it's just natural for them to reach into the design <laughs> the design cool kit and uh, to to push and ask uh, and ask the the questions that uh, sometimes even question the like some of the um, the, the fundamentals of the enterprise, the fundamentals of the, of the university, um, and suggest longer term changes. Um, I would see, um, there's a fantastic book. I think it's called immunity to change. Um, I would see the, the universities change immune system, um, uh, taking out <laughs> fewer of the good things. <laughs> um, I would, um, I would see more people approaching uh, approaching the the work and their conversations uh, with some kind of process. And when I say some kind of process, like I don't I don't I don't care whether it's like like the like one you get from Stanford or like IBM has one, my consultancy has, consultancy has one. Um, like I don't care what it is, but have one um, so that you know, you have a shared language on a shared way of thinking about, okay, what is this problem we're trying to address? How does it matter? Um, how do we proceed through? Because then you have something to to tweak and get better at. Um, you have um, tools that um, that you can craft uh, to, to solve like, your unique challenges. Um, you can think of um, you know Ohio State, Elon, Georgetown, very different institutions. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Um, there's yeah. place, history, public, private, all, all of that. Um, and, you know, um, Randy Bassett, um, you know, he, he talks about that, that unique combination of like, Hey, well, like, what can you do with you? Like place, history, resources, all of those things. And I think I've channeled a bit of Randy when I talk about like what is uniquely possible. Um, and so I think that the distance between, um, or the, the ability for the whirlwind to insert distance between um, delivering the day-to-day -day 
and designing the future um, will get harder. Doesn't mean it won't happen, um, but I think that um, it will get harder. And I think that um, people won't necessarily talk about design thinking the way they do now. Um, we will, I mean, uh, my title, like design and innovation. Um, so it's that human centered piece. And, um, if they, you, and, I, and I love the definition of innovation from um, 10 Types of Innovation uh, by uh, Larry Keeley and many others. Mm -hmm. um, and that's um, the creation of viable new offerings. And, and that's that's fantastic because you have creation, which implies process. You have viable means it like works in all the ways um, viability happens. New, new to the world or new to um, your context. Um, and you can use the Uber example. Like Uber didn't really invent anything new, but they pulled a whole bunch of stuff together that hadn't been combined that way. Uh, mm -hmm. And that converse, uh, combination is powerful. Uh, and the last piece is offering. Because uh, people will say, oh, we're, we're, there's a lot of innovation happening here at, at our organization or university. or um, And it's like, oh, when you start to talk, you're like, wait, no, not a lot of it gets offered. Um, and it's that offering piece that says it has to get out to the world and get out to get out to students. Um, and so when you have that design and innovation, um, I think that there will be a, um, you know, if, if I think about that designified uh, university, um, it would be a university where the that that isn't a special space that we inhabit occasionally. Um, it's just part of how we do things. Um, right. And there would be small pieces distributed throughout uh, throughout all of the all of the activities, all of the meetings, all of the uh, question, uh, all of the excuse me, all of the all the rituals, all of the places where the work happens. So it's designing it into the work. Um, that's what I'm trying to do now. And it's a lot of figuring it out as I, as I go. Um, yeah. and I'm, I'm grateful to the, the, the provost at Ohio state and, and all of my Ohio state colleagues for, um, giving me the, the, the space to really lean into that. Um, and, um, the, um, the grace to roll with, the things um, not only I don't know, I don't know, but we don't know, we don't know. Which is hard in academia. We we're, we're supposed to know things. Uh, yes, um, well, we are. <laughs> um, the being being expert knowers is you know, sort of um, the the tradition, um, and you know, we're we're heading into the world where we are expert learners, um, and. And, and creating environments that help people come into um, ways of uh, of knowing, making ways of knowing their own, uh, and, and those are currently associated with disciplines. Um, and I think we would have another hour long conversation uh, about um, that future university and, and, and disciplines and, and where they go uh, when you are really designing with the the learner in mind. Um, as opposed to the faculty discipline. Well, that can go in a whole other direction. And and Carol in the chat just asked a great question, which uh, which was that uh, any any sus sustainability has to be part of the viability of the solution. And mm -hmm. that's making me think, ah, well, how do you plug sustainability into the design process? And then I thought it is three o'clock, and we have to we have to wrap things up. Very sadly, Dewan, you have you have taken us through this hour with with delight and a lot of, lot of thinking. Um, this is terrific. How, how can we keep up with you? What's the best way to track what you're working on? Uh, so there's the Design Thinking 101 podcast. Um, comes out uh, every other other week, toddler willing. Um, and um, we have a, another, we're adding a new segment to that uh, called Five and a Half Things. Um, so it's five and a half things every designer should know about design. The first one of those is going to be about the opioid overdose epidemic. Uh, we wanted to bring in subject matter experts um, wow. that are connected to places where more human-centered design would be fantastic. Um, so we have, we have that opening up. Um, if anyone knows someone who would like my job, um, we are currently hiring for that. Um, and so the, um, 
you know, that uh, job posting is up on um, uh, live on, on Ohio State. Um, and I think Brian retweeted it on or uh, re, re, resent it on, uh, on LinkedIn. Uh, so, so that's out there. And um, you can also find out about different things I'm doing via, uh, via Fluid Hive. Uh, yes, Lisa, go toddlers. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's, um, that's, that's my, my world. There's a, there's a link to uh, Fluid Hive as well as to the Design Thinking 101 on the bottom of the screen. Um, so Juan, thank you so much. Um, please go go back to your um, your toddler and to Ohio State, and um, I look forward to grabbing as much of you as I can at Georgetown University. Oh, thank you, Brian, and uh, looking forward to the next time we get to play together. <laughs> excellent, excellent. And friends, don't leave yet. I just need to point out where we're headed over the next few weeks. So if you're interested in continuing this thought, what is, how does Agile play with design thinking? How does design thinking follow Carol's admonition to consider sustainability? Just continue our conversation on Twitter. Use the hashtag FTTE or tweet at me, Brian Alexander, or at Shindig Events, or check out the uh, our blog, uh, brianalexander.org. If you'd like to look into our previous sessions on design thinking or anything else having to do with the future of higher ed, just go to our archive, tinyurl.com slash FTF archive. If you'd like to see what else we're talking about coming up, everything from inclusive teaching to the climate crisis to diversity and technology, just go to forum.futureofeducation.us. And if you'd like to share with us any of the great things you've been working on, please just shoot me a note on Gmail. Uh, I would love to uh, share that. We've already got some more shares coming up over the next few weeks. And thank you all for great questions. Thanks for letting design thinking ripple across our minds. Thank you for thinking about how to change institutions for the best. And as you all work in institutions, please take care, do great work. Above all, be safe. And we'll see you next time online. Bye-bye. <laughs>